Hello class, it's been a long journey and it all culminates with this. This is Christopher Britt Wall's final project for EDU 620. This final project will be a project for 9th through 11th grade students that are in environmental science. They're going to be covering the following standards during this project, SEV4 and SEV5. Now, SEV4 and SEV5, they essentially say that students are going to have to analyze and interpret data and construct arguments based on how human populations, resources, and demographics are all connected. And specifically, when we talk about demographics, we're looking at quality of life demographics, like wealth and poverty, and how they affect resource use. So when my students start this project, they're going to be introduced with a video about Zoonal. This is my first time using Zoonal. It'll be their first time using Zoonal. So I gave them instructions on how to use the site. Then when they get to Zoonal, they're going to have all of these tasks that they're going to need to go through, the most important of which will be the process and evaluation tabs. Now, under process, they're going to see everything that they need to do for this project, all of their instructions, links to what they need, all of that. It's quite a lengthy project. I had a lot to cover. Don't judge me. All right. So when they go into their project, the first link they'll click on is this interactive map. I love interactive maps because they give uh, students a license to explore. If you look at this interactive map, I'll go on ahead and play it, you'll see that populations are popping up all over the world as time progresses. If students want to know what was going on in history throughout that time, they can mouse over these, like here a Japanese smallpox e epidemic occurred. Um, you can mouse over some more recent events like the Great, the Great Leap Forward, um, GMOs were put into our food supply, all of that. And you'll see how the populations grow and how they flourish, how they move around the world with this tool. If students want to learn a little bit about civilization, they can click on a civilization and it should pop up with a little tidbit of information about the area that they're looking at. Next. I'm a little bit of a thief here. All good teachers are. Uh, I was inspired by the flip grid that we recently did, and I've got my students doing a flip grid here. They're going to be explaining how they see human population growth throughout history. They're going to be responding to their classmates and providing evidence, kind of that construction part of the standard that they're covering. Then the next thing that they're going to do is they're going to go to the Census Bureau's population clock. They'll have a U.S. population and a world population, and they're going to get to see them rising. Um, now, of course, these are estimates in what they'll think is real time. Now, here's another interactive map. I enjoy these because it gives students a lot of freedom to look around. Here, they're going to be clicking on countries around the world and looking at the demographic information for those countries. Whenever they click on a country, they'll be taken to demographic information about the country and they're directed during the project to look specifically at issues of health care and wealth. All right. Now, once they've gotten this information, they're going to go to Leno. And here they're going to start collaborating with each other. They're going to be sharing information that they find from the Census Bureau uh, website. It's too large for any one student to gain all of the information. So they're going to be posting all over this Leno board and they're going to be sharing information with each other. I've given them instructions over here in blue. Whenever I use Leno, I color code everything so that all of my comments are in blue and I give them instructions on how they're to color code their comments, questions, and answers. After they've done that, they've got an assignment in Google Docs. In Google Docs, I've given them this worksheet where they're going to answer questions drawing on the information from this Leno board. 
Next, we get to the TED Talk. Now, I know videos aren't great technolo technology integration, but I absolutely love this man. Forgive me. His name is Hans Rosling. He did the most inspirational TED Talk that I've ever watched in my life called The Overpopulation Myth. And it talks about where demographers have uh, seen the population going in the past and where they expect it to be going now. And he talks about how population change isn't necessarily the worst thing that our world will experience. He talks about how our population is going to eventually level off and why it's going to level off. Essentially, if my students watch this video and take notes on it like I asked them to, they're going to come away with a great understanding of how populations work and that's why I've included them. Next, the final portion of their project asks them to take all of the information that they've learned so far and they're going to incorporate it in a Google site. Now, the Google site, I like Google Sites because it's very similar to Weebly, but at the same time, it's part of the Google Suite. And my students are very familiar with the Google Suite by this point in the class. So I want to keep all of their work in one area. So they'll be making a Google Site, and the Google Site will require that they do this. They are to read every single one of these websites. They'll be working in a small group and they're going to evaluate those websites. They're going to look at the information that the website provides and talk about what it is that the website is about, what um, use it could be for somebody trying to learn the information on poverty and populations and how they're related. And anyways, they will write reviews for each of these websites. On their Google site, they're going to post each of these sites as a link. The link has to work, and they're going to have a review of the website on their website. Then also, they're going to have to construct an explanation of what all they have learned and why they believe what they believe using evidence from the WebQuest. Again, going back to the standards that I mentioned before, the standards are all about constructing explanations, constructing arguments, being able to analyze and interpret data. So since they're going to be doing that on this website, I feel like it kind of culminates everything. It helps bring it all together. And if they can teach others, then I know that they know the material. All right, finally, what am I going to do about remediation? Well, uh, the thing about remediation here is that this is a self-guided activity. The students will be working on it. I will be facilitating. So I'm going to constantly be moving around the room and students that don't understand how to do something or don't understand what they're reading will be getting a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention. Beyond that one-on-one -on -one attention, if students do need some kind of extra remediation, they're always welcome to come by to my advisement period or come by to my room after school, and I'll help them as best I can. I will evaluate the students' needs and respond appropriately. Finally, <clears throat> how am I going to grade all this? Well, if you go back to the Zoonal website, under evaluations, my students will find all of my rubrics, painstakingly crafted rubrics to give them everything that they need to know about what I'm grading on. All right, everybody, I hope that meets all of your questions, answers all of your questions, and I hope everybody has a good day.